Welcome to Nursing 246, Nursing Practical 3. This is Section 6B, Colostomy, Irrigation and Care. My name is Miss Linda Norman. A brief section overview. This section seeks to explain guidelines for the management of a colostomy system. Students will gain competency in rendering care to clients with a colostomy institute. Colostomy irrigation and care is intended to maintain continence, keep the stoma and surrounding skin in good condition, encourage self-care as much as possible, facilitate acceptance of the client into the community, and to replace leaking bags. Goals and objectives for this section. At the end of this section, students are required to list the indications for the colostomy, discuss purpose for colostomy care, identify the equipment for colostomy irrigation and care, demonstrate application and fixing of the pouch and skin barrier, demonstrate colostomy irrigation care, and then demonstrate changing of colostomy pouch or bag. This is the outline for the section. The key topics to be covered in this section are as follows. Purpose and indication of colostomy, types of colostomy, types of pouches, colostomy care, that is the entire procedure, and then complications of colostomy. And these are the reading list uh, which will guide us in learning about colostomy care. Purpose and indication of colostomy. Um, a brief anatomy of the colon. Um, we have the ascending colon, transverse, descending colon, the sigmoid, and then rectum, and then the anus. And since it's um, colostomy, basically it is in the colon. What is colostomy care? A colostomy uh, is a surgical opening in the colon in which the colon is brought to the surface of the abdomen to allow stools to leave the body. Colostomy care Therefore, is the maintenance of hygiene by regular emptying of the colostomy bag and cleaning of the colostomy site. So we have um, a colostomy, which is a surgical opening to the colon, and then the care is maintenance of hygiene, which requires that you empty the colostomy bag and then you clean the colostomy site. The purpose of colostomy care. One is to prevent leakage. Two, to prevent excoriation of the skin and stoma. And three, to observe stoma and surrounding skin. Um, the, we want to prevent leakage because the abdominal contents, when it gets to the skin, it can cause irritation and breakdown of the skin. So we want to prevent excoriation of the skin by making sure that it is leak proof. And then also we'll clean it and then make sure that um, the skin is not damaged. And then we want to observe the skin for any changes in the skin. What are the indications for colostomy care? One, we have colon cancer. So if somebody um, has colon cancer, uh, colostomy can be done and then we have to care for it. And then if you also have diverticular diseases, um, a colostomy can also be done. Crohn's disease, and then trauma or any injury into the abdomen, um, any injury to the abdomen or the intestines, a colostomy can also be done. And then as a nurse, you have to take care of the colostomy, which has been done. The next item is types of colostomy. So colostomy, we have different, different types, and we want to talk about it briefly. There are three types. Depending on the location um, of the surgery, you have the type. So the three types are ascending colostomy or ascending colon colostomy. This colostomy has a stoma located on the right side of the abdomen. And then the stool, which you will see um, in the pouch, is in a liquid form. And then you have a transverse colostomy. This colostomy is on the upper abdomen towards the middle or right side, and the stools may be loose or soft. And then also the last one is descending or sigmoid colostomy. 
This colostomy is on the left side of the abdomen, and then the stools are firm. We want um, nurses to take note, we want students to take note that um, depending on the site of the colostomy, the stools will have different consistency. So if it's on the ascending side, it will be liquid form, transverse, it will be loose or soft, and then descending, the stools are soft. The stools are firm. So please take note of that. Um, colostomy can also be classified in relation to its duration. So whether it's going to be there for a short time or a longer time, we can also classify it as follows. So we can have a temporal colostomy, which may be in place for weeks, months, or year. And then um, it is eventually closed and the bowel movement returns to normal. And then we can also have a permanent colostomy, which is usually needed when a part of the colon must be removed or cannot be used again. Usually with patients with cancers and other diseases um, which are not temporal, then you put a permanent colostomy in and the patient will have to have it for life. So we can also um, have these two, whether it's temporal or is what permanent. Let's go to types of pouches that are used. So we have different, different types. So what is a pouch? Um, there are a variety of sizes and styles of colostomy pouches. They are placed over the stomach to collect the feces that normally would pass through the rectum and then the anus. And then pouches are lightweight and then odor proof. Pouches have a special covering that prevents the pouch from sticking to the body. So it's a pouch and you don't, have, you don't want it to stick to the body. Uh, you don't want the feces to, to um, touch the skin. So some pouches also have charcoal filters which release gas slowly and to help decrease gas odor. We are talking about pouches. These pouches are going to collect feces, so most of them are odor proof so that you don't smell the feces when the person has the pouch in place. So we have um, two main types. We have an open-ended pouch, and then there can also be a closed-ended pouch. The open-ended pouch, this type of pouch has an opening the bottom which, in the bottom which allows the pouch to drain its contents. The open end is usually closed with a clamp. This type of pouch is usually used by people with ascending or transverse colostomies. The stools are more loose and then unpredictable. And then the close-ended pouch, um, this pouch is removed and thrown away when the pouch is filled. Close-ended pouches are usually used by people with descending or sigmoid colostomy. The stools in this region are usually firm. So depending on where the colostomy was done, you can use either an open-ended pouch or a close-ended pouch. And then pouches also can come in as one piece, two piece, or pre-cuts or cut to fit. So the one piece one um, contains the pouch and adhesive skin barrier together as one unit. So everything is one piece. The adhesive skin barrier is the part of the pouch system that is placed around the stoma and attached to the skin. When the pouch is removed and replaced with a new one, the new pouch must must have adhesive skin barrier for reattachment to the skin. So the one piece is that the pouch plus the adhesive skin barrier are together as one. So if you remove it and you are going to replace it, you need a whole set or a whole unit to use. And then the two piece, the two piece pouch has two parts, an adhesive flank and a pouch. The adhesive flank stays in place while the pouch is removed. A new pouch is attached to the flank. The pouch does not need to be reattached to the skin each time. The two-piece system can be helpful for patients 
with sensitive skin. So in the two-piece pouch, it's made up of two parts. There are adhesive parts and then the pouch itself. And then the flank or the adhesive flank stays in place. And then whenever the pouch is full, you just take it out and then you only need to attach the pouch. You don't need to take off the whole thing. Then we can also have pre-cuts or cut-to-fit pouches. Some um, pouches have pre-cut holes. Others too can be cut to fit the size and shape of the stoma. So cut-to-fit pouches are especially useful right after you have a surgery because the stoma will decrease in size after about eight weeks. So you can also have um, pre-cut or cut-to-fit pouches and then you cut it um, depending on how the uh, stoma size is or how um, the stoma size decreases after the surgery is done. Now let's go to the main um, thing that we normally do when somebody has a colostomy um, done. We have to take care of the colostomy. So let's look at the procedure of taking care of the colostomy. Colostomy care procedure. And then with every procedure, we need items that we need um, for the procedure. So let's look at the items. Um, these are the equipments that we need. You want to have a Macintosh and a towel to protect um, the bed. You need disposable and sterile gloves. You need gauze swabs, water, mouth soap in a dish. Um, disposable colostomy bag with a clamp and then you also need stoma measuring guide zinc oxide ointment you want to use it to protect the skin um, and then the skin barrier so the skin barrier can still be the zinc oxide ointment or if you don't have any zinc oxide you can also use um, Vaseline or any barrier cream and then you need um, a bed pan with cover because the colostomy, you have feces, so when you empty it, you have to cover it. And then you need a screen. In every procedure, you need to uh, provide privacy. So you need a screen to provide privacy before you start the care. So let's look at the procedure itself. You have to explain the procedure to the client. Um, don't just go and stand there and say that I'm coming to take care of your colostomy bag or take care of your colostomy. You have to explain into details what you are going to do step by step so that the client does not um, uh, become apprehensive or uncooperative when you are doing the procedure. So you need to explain into detail what you are going to do. And then you assemble your equipment. You don't want to be running up and down when you start doing the procedure. So you need to have all the equipment ready before you start. Then you have to wash your hands, and then you put on your gloves. And you provide privacy, and then you assist the client into a comfortable position. So you can either use a fowless, semi fowless or a sitting up position. Any of them will do. And then um, you empty the partially filled pouch into the bed pan, if it's, it is a drainable one, um, if it's open. So you have to empty the pouch into the bed pan and then you cover it. Um, if it's not um, a drainable one or a closed one, you just have to take the whole uh, pouch off. You remove the pouch slowly, beginning at the top while keeping the abdominal skin firm. So you have to hold it and then you remove it slowly. You don't want to uh, force it so that um, the pouch and everything uh, will come out, will come off forcefully. You need to do it slowly from the top and then you hold the skin firmly. You use the gauze to remove excess stool from the stoma and then you cover the stoma with the gauze. And then you gently wash with mild soap and then you dry the peristomal skin by patting it gently. You have to also do an assessment after you have washed it to see the appearance of the skin and then the stoma. And then the stoma should be what? Moist, reddish, pink. And then that is the normal one that you are supposed to see. If you see anything, whether it's dark or bluish or whatever, it means that um, there's something off. 
over there. So you have to um, check the appearance of the stoma and then the skin, the skin, uh, the site too. You have to check the skin area around the site to see whether it, you have any skin lesions there or any irritations or any skin breakdowns. You have to also check. That is part of your assessment. And then you also apply skin barrier. So that can be your zinc oxide. And then I said earlier on that you can also use Vaseline if you don't have zinc oxide. And then you allow the paste, um, the zinc oxide, you allow it to dry for about one to two minutes. If it's Vaseline, you can just apply it. Apply the skin barrier and then apply it together. So you have to apply the skin barrier. Then you apply the appliance. Okay, so let's look at how you prepare your pouch before you apply it. You have to select the size of the stoma opening by using the measurement guide. There's usually a guide that you use, so um, it's um, a paper form, and then you can put it on the stoma, and then you get the size, and then you take it to your appliance, and then you cut it. You trace the same size circle on the back at the center of the skin, barrier and then you use scissors to cut an opening about one fourth or one eighth inch larger than the stoma and then you remove the backing to expose the sticky side then after that um, you ease barrier and pouch over the stoma and then gently you press onto the skin while smoothing out um, creases or wrinkles you hold the pouch in place for about five minutes. You can also instill aspirin into the bag to prevent odor. Mm, you can also uh, um, put aspirin in the bag and then that will prevent the odor. And then you close the pouch if it is a drainable one by folding the upper end upward and then you use the clamp or clip and then you clip it. Um, if it's not a disposable one, it is closed. So you don't need to do anything after applying it. And then you dispose of use equipment. So whatever you use, you have to dispose it. Um, some of the things you have to go and discard it. Some of them will be thrown away. Some of them need to be washed and disinfected for reuse later on. And then after you, you've discarded your equipment, you discard um, the gloves. You wash your hands, and then you come to your documentation. Um, after every procedure, you need to document. You don't put it in your head and say that you have done it, and then you remember. We are doing continuation of care, continuity of care. Somebody else will come and continue with the care. So you need to document it so that the next person who will come after you will know what you have done. So you have to document what you have done, and you have to document the appearance of the stoma, the condition of the peristoma skin, and then the client reaction to the procedure. So you document all these, and then um, when another person comes after you, they'll be able to know what you did. Or when another person is going to change um, the colostomy bag or the whole unit, the person will have that in, at the back of their mind, and they're doing the assessment what they will look out for. OK, so. Um, these are the steps um, for a picture showing the steps for how to clean the colostomy sites and then get the right side of the pouch and then the barrier. So this, the picture there explains itself. And then you um, apply the colostomy and then you go on. And then there are things that you have to do when um, a client is um, using a colostomy um, bag or the client has a colostomy. So we want to talk about the diet, what you have to do if the patient has a colostomy um, in place. So diet is very, very important. So um, when a person has a colostomy in place or done, um, you have to also advise the client to take high fiber diet to prevent constipation. You don't want the patient to have constipation. And then encourage the client to drink at least eight to 10 cups of water each day. Most of us don't like drinking water, but if you have a colostomy um, in place or done, you need to drink a lot of water. 
you don't want to be constipated. So you need a lot of fiber, you need a lot of fluid also in your diet. And then also you need to educate the client to identify and then avoid foods that cause gas and odor. Mm? So some of these vegetables such as broccoli, um, broccoli is expensive <laughs> in Ghana, so who will not worry about broccoli, but cabbage and cauliflower, they are very, very common. We use it in our diets all the time, in our salads, in stews, soups. So that one, you have to advise the patient. If they are eating it, it has to be um, on the lower side. And then beans, eggs, fish, mm, garlic. So all those foods that can produce a lot of odor and gas, you have to educate the client to avoid it or even if they will use it, they have to use it in moderation. So these are the dietary considerations and then the education you need to give to the patient when they have a colostomy in place. Let's look at some complications of the colostomy. So in your assessment also, you have to also look out for some of the complications that you may find uh, when the person has the colostomy in place. So some of the complications are peristoma hernia. And this occurs when part of the colon bulges into the area around the stoma. And hernias are most obvious um, when there is pressure on the abdomen. So when the person is sitting down, coughing or straining, then you see the hernia. So sometimes there may be a peristonia hernia. So you have to also look out for it when the person is sitting, straining or coughing. And then also there can be prolapse. So the stomach prolapse may be caused by increased abdominal pressure. And then it, it means that the bowel becomes longer and protrudes out of the stomach and above the abdomen surface. And if you have a prolapse, surgery must be done to fix it in some people. In some people, they can just push it back and then they will be all right. But in some people, when it keeps recurring, they have to take them um, back to theater and then perform a surgery to fix the prolapse. So other um, complications, um, stenosis, and then stenosis is just narrowing or tightening of the stoma at or below the skin level. The stenosis of the colostomy may be mild or severe. A mild um, stenosis can cause noise as stool and gas is passed. And then the severe stenosis can cause obstruction of the stool. So it's very important that you look out for stenosis too. If you hear noises and gas um, when the stool is passed, then you have to think of stenosis. And then if there's obstruction too, you also have to think about um, severe stenosis. So you have to look out for stenosis as well. And then you can also have stoma retraction. And then retractions happens when the height of the stoma goes down to the skin level or below the skin level. So during your assessment, you have to look out for all these things. Is the stoma up above the skin level or it is at the skin level or below the skin level? If it is down below the skin level or at the skin level, it means that it is retracting. So you have to report that to the doctor. And then, and then retraction may also okay after surgery because the colon does not become active soon enough after the surgery. So after the surgery, you may also see retraction. And then retraction may also happen because of weight gain. And if the person gained some weight, there may be retraction. You see the um, stomach below or inside. The pouching system must be changed to match the change in the stomach shape. So after the surgery, if there is any retraction, you have to take the pouch out and then you refix it. Uh, you have to measure it and make sure that it fits the shape that you are seeing. So in conclusion, we want to say that colostomy care is needed for clients with colostomy in situ to provide for their elimination needs and then to help improve their self-esteem. Um, 
having stool on you is not the best thing. Nobody wants that. So if somebody has a colostomy in place, we need to take care of it so that it will improve their self-esteem and then take care of their elimination needs. And then the nurse caring for such a client needs to be empathetic towards the client. You know what empathy means. Um, it means that you have to put yourself in place of the client. And then you have to um, yes, understand what the patient is going through. And then not to be um, harsh or embarrassed. You just have to put yourself in the client's shoes and then care for the clients. And then the nurse is also required to use aseptic techniques in providing the stoma care. So you just don't go and use um, your disposable glove. You have to use um, surgical gloves. And then it is aseptic technique. So you have to put all aseptic measures in place in providing care for the colostomy. We have an assignment here. It's for you to do it, to add to your knowledge so that you'll be able to care for your patient well. Um, to read on colostomy irrigation. Sometimes you need, there's a need for the colostomy to be irrigated so that the stools will move freely. So you have to read it to add and then to take, take care of your clients. And then also identify and provide colostomy care for a client with a colostomy. So wherever you find yourself working, identify a client with a colostomy and then care for the client. And these are our references and for further reading.